A blessed good morning to each and every one to begin this morning worship. Shall we all stand, please? Turn, the, turn with me in your hymn books, number three in your hymn books this morning. We'll take the first and the fourth stanza. We sing praise God from whom all blessings flow. In your hymn books, 134 in your hymn books, 134 when the morning comes. <laughs>
24 in your hymn books. Four hundred and twenty-four. Take the name of Jesus with you. scripture reading this morning. We'll sing this wonderful chorus. The B-I-B-L-E is that's a book for me. The B-I-B-L-E
Say a blessing. Good morning to each and everyone. Right. This morning's scripture is taken from the book of James. James chapter 1. We'll be reading from verse 1 to 16. And we'll do so responsibly. James chapter 1, verse 1 to 16. And it reads, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith will get patience. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Then when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Together, do not err, my beloved brethren. Amen. 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 Please, you may take your seat. May the Lord have the richest blessing on reading and hearing of the holy words. Again, take your hymn books with me and turn to 434 in your hymn books. 434 shall be guarded at a river.
Let's sing this wonderful chorus. We are happy people. Praise the Lord. We are happy people. to be here, reminding ourselves of the master's promise. He is with his children, gathered together in the house of prayer, as well as in club, modern extension, and even those who give their own extension, just refuse to come, pay no attention, and remain where they are. But God it is the children wherever they are. We must understand that. He carries not the rod in vain because he wants us to wake up to, to realize we are his children. And he looked and take care of us, so God's grace be upon each one. The services continue as usual. Sunday coming is the Lord's Supper. We start quarter to nine and just remind ourselves to be present. Pray one for another and thank the Lord for the many who is assisting in whatever way. There's only one thing I would want to bring back. I, it, my wife re re reminded me we had this thing about 30 or 40 years ago, this understanding. I saw the need for it when I talked with Brother Ragus some time ago. It should be apl applied to every one of us. Every one of us. In James said, you, are, you have not because you ask not. We want, but I would like to see, we find one or two verses in the Bible, like in James, the tongue is an unruly member. Every one of us know the tongue put us in troubles all over the world, anywhere we go. We end up in trouble because of the tongue. But behind that, we know that, we experience that. How many really kneel down and tell the Lord, my tongue, now don't tell me about somebody else's tongue. That's not the issue. Don't talk about this fellow tongue or the next one, tongue, tongue there. How many of us kneel down and talk to the Lord? Lord, you know my tongue. Put me in this trouble. Make me say that. And I've sinned against you. It's my tongue, Lord. Give me grace and give me strength that I'll overcome it or be, bet or be able to use our tongue better. That is what I would like 
people just coming to church and going back with not without the word of God in their soul. So what I would like to see everyone, as much as possible, not only here on, on the Tuesday night prayer time. What text in the Bible encourage you and cause you to know you are a sinner and you ask in the Lord to change you, not nobody else. Because when you, when and I change, the whole world changes after that. This is what I would like to see happen. And the wife reminded me people didn't want to come. That is why it stopped 50, 40 years ago. But I'll tell you something. If you have an unruly tongue, and in unruly tongue for 5, 10, 10 and 20, and 30 years, and you never ask God to change you, change your tongue. If you die, where your tongue carry you? So I'm just telling you what we are doing, what we are doing. And I wouldn't call nobody often, but I'll inform them time as we go on time. I'll say, Brother so and so, sister so and so, get, get two verses and come here. Apply the verse to yourself. Let the word of God dwell in you, not somebody else. So that's the only thing coming up. And the Bible tells us, let the word of God dwell in us, in you, richly. And that's the only way. Do you know Muslims are becoming Muslims? Because they are given something to quote three, four, and five times a day. That's all they're doing, you know. They're quoting it in three, four, and five times. And when you quote it two or three times, you are enrolled in the book. And then from now on, every day, you have to quote something in your soul. What about Christians? They're not in the quote. Well, they're well, they quoting they quote the wrong thing. God help us before it's too late. Thank you. So we all stand for our last hymn. Turn with me in your hymn books, 456 in your hymn books. 456. Nothing but the blood. I'm going to Marlon to take up this morning. in heaven. Father, but if a day that you have blessed us with. Father, that opportunity that I have given to each and every one, we could gather once for the house to worship and praise your holy name. Father, and for offering that particular of Father, and to give, and whoever to give, we bless each and every one, and may the offering be the for the answer of thy cause. Father, we to come for this morning, our man servant, Brother Jolly, as we are about to bring forth your word, ask a blessing upon him, as we preach your word once more to thy people. Whatever we have learned in the house, or as we listen on Zoom, that we will bless each and every one, that we as your people, whatever we have learned, we not take your word to ourselves, we're going to share your word with a lost one, and somehow 
that lost when convicted and come here, I'll listen to your word and be saved in your name. I pray that you bless all the services today. And when everything is said and done, you see all you and all holy glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Please, you may take your seat. Now, the message of the brother, John. Thank you very much, Brother Janam. It's indeed a blessing and a privilege, beloved, to be in the Lord's house. We must thank the Lord for every day that He, he gives to us, whereby He, simply like waking up, a lot of us take that for granted. I also noticed, beloved, that without a vacant mic, here this morning. Now, anybody wants to sit in there and you can sing, there's a mic, you can come up and join the choir as well. So you're not like a fixed bunch of people to come and sing. Anybody, you're welcome to come and be part of it, right? Turn back to the passage to James chapter 1. And my message is entitled, beloved, Temptation. Boys, as usual, we're going to look deep into what temptation is and how to recognize that we are falling into temptation. To recognize it, beloved. Look at verse 12 of James chapter 1. Blessed is a man that endure it temptation. Now, let's hear the, word, hear, the, hear the words they use here. Yeah? Blessed is a man that endure it temptation. Not blessed is the man that is tempted. Blessed is the man that endure it. So you're being tempted, but you're not crossing that line. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted <clears throat> of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Next important point to note, neither tempted he any man. Pay particular attention to verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away or pulled away, or that translation have when he moved away from his own loss and entice. So a man is tempted when he's moved away. What does cause you to move? You don't move by yourself. What causes you to move? Those who are studying physics, those science children and them, a force. A force causes us to move. So with these passages in mind, let me get on to the message. As the author says, beloved, temptation triggers guilt in our personal lives when we give in to our desires. When we give in to our desires. A little boy named Bobby, he went to Sunday school. Always in Sunday school. He so desperately want a brand new bike. The Sunday school teacher, in a wonderful lessons, taught him that he must pray. Anything you want in life, you must pray, put it to the Lord, and he will bless you with it. So he planned, well, he says prayers, and you understand prayers without works, you need to work. So he saved every nickel, every dime, and every quarter, 25 cents until he had enough money for a brand new bike. 
But every night this boy pray. He say each night he asks God to help him save this money. Kneeling beside his bed, he will pray. He said, dear Lord, please help me save my money for a new bike. And please, Lord, don't let the ice cream man pass down the street again tomorrow. Bobby saving his money. But the ice cream man tempting Bobby every day, John. So the man not reaching any new money, the, bike, the money for the new bike. Ice cream. But instead of praying, Lord, help me resist this ice cream man. You're praying for that to them. But don't let the man pass tomorrow, Lord. And sometimes we pray like that. When it comes to temptation, we have a similar approach as believers. And let me show you, and we'll go through this in detail. Quincy Adams, the most, one of the famous presidents, he said, every temptation is an opportunity to get nearer to God. He believed in that. Look at next interesting illustration about temptation. You know how Eskimos will kill wolves? In the North Pole, there's nothing we wouldn't know about this. We don't live up in the cold. But whenever these wolves, they say these wolves are so smart, they come in and eat in the livestock. They have, well, in Eximos, there is, there is red deer and whatnot to live. Just like how we have cattle and goat and sheep, they will, uh, they will domesticate um, deers. But then the wolves now will come and lick them up. The Eskimo will coat a blade, a very sharp cutlass, with blood. And allow it to freeze. So they're taking their blood and freezing the blood on the cutlass blade. Now, use cutlass, but they're using here, they say, a very sharp blade. Until the blade is covered. Then they will place the knife in the snow. It will entice the wolf, and the wolf will start to come and lick the deer blood. The tongue, after a while, his tongue is numb. So the man, the deer, the, the wolf, licking this blade, the blade numb in the tongue. And his hunger is fuel. So this is like temptation now, licking the blood, tongue numb, he not stopping. The wolf will. It, eventually reach down to the blade with his with the numb tongue and cut his own tongue and eventually bleed to death. Satan uses the same tactic on us, beloved. He knows that he can never get the soul, but he knows that if, if it will cause us to succumb to temptation, then we will become powerless. Wolves is a very, very, very smart creature. But there is something that quaven. All of us have a yearning. So what is your temptation this morning? What it is you will deviate from the Bible. Will deviate from the word of God. You just take a little taste. You like the wolves licking the frozen blood on the cutlass blade. Eventually, a tongue will get numb. So eventually, we're doing this over and over and over again, and you become numb. It's not affecting your spirituality anymore. You're not being moved. You don't see the need to ask for forgiveness anymore. That comes part of life. But eventually, beloved, you will reach down to the blade. And you will lick that blade and you'll cut your own tongue. So the blade already numb. Sorry, the tongue already numb. When he cut, you're feeling nothing. Satan is more likely to attack the believer than the unbeliever. It's an established fact. He's not wasting his time on the unbeliever. 
he's coming after you and I. You already have the lost person. He loves nothing better than to cause one of God's children to fall into sin. Likes nothing better. However, temptation, while it cannot be avoided, it can be overcome. No what shame I hear some people whenever they sin, they say, well, I was tempted. I, I can't understand. You have to get up in the morning. You have to get ready. You have to get in your vehicle at a certain time or go and get transportation at a certain time. Pay your passage. Make your way to the, to the location where you're not supposed to be. Spend two, three hours there where you're not supposed to be. Then when somebody tell, tell you about it, oh, well, I was tempted. We cannot, we cannot operate like that, beloved. The Lord knows the heart. We go into, we, we take great deal and effort to do the wrong thing. Check the last time you do something contrary to the word of God. The effort you're putting it. The first thing you do is make sure you don't get catch. That's the first thing you will do. Those who go up at club and raise children, that's the first thing a little child will do. Make sure they don't get catch. That's the first thing. I believe that every believer needs, to, needs and wants to know how to turn away. And don't give in to it. When temptation arises, men usually respond in one of three ways. One of three ways we are, we are, we are responding. Flight, fight, or feet. And let me show you, we have some examples here of temptation. There are the three ways. It turned them temptation into triumph. That was so like wishful thinking, but you can be triumphant, beloved, whenever we have been tempted. Let us look at a very common story, the temptation of Joseph. The story of Joseph in the book of Genesis is another good example of the temptation in the Bible. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. We all know this story. Ended up in Egypt. His life was not one. It is in a matter of hours. His life flipped. One moment he was. Next minute he was in Egypt. The opposite. He was a slave. Where he worked. For a prominent official. Called Potiphar. Potiphar's wife repeatedly. Tried to seduce this boy. But he refused to advances. So let us look at them in detail. Look at next man, the temptation of David. David, the king of Israel, was also faced with temptation in the form of Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. David saw her bathing and he roofed up and was overcome with that desire. He was overcome by the desire for her. Then he sent for her, make a child with her, and arrange for the killing of her husband. You know how Lord deal with that. Look how. You think the Lord wasn't seeing David? What David was doing, you think the Lord wasn't seeing him? Yes, the Lord was seeing him perfect. But the Lord does allow. Then when he reached a certain point, he will send a messenger for you. He will send a message for you. We are assaulted daily by a wide range of temptations. So don't tell yourself you're not like David. And don't make a mistake and tell yourself and not like Joseph. You better have a verse for that too. 
Do not think your temptation that you are ready fit. That this cannot happen to us. That it cannot happen to you and I. It could. So our first point, beloved. Natural temptation. You're going to categorize temptation or you're going to show in the Bible. Genesis 39 and verse 6. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. Natural temptation. Each of us have a natural desire that God has given us, including the desire for acceptance, sex and food, and many more. So the first type of temptation, natural temptation. Lord bless Joseph. Joseph, tall, strapped, young man. Whenever the Lord bless us in that field, beloved. You know, the, ten the tendency, the attraction, the, 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 the tend to attract certain type of lifestyle associated with that. That are born again, that I believe I believe it. You have to be conscious about this. Influential temptation. Genesis 39 and verse 7. After a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed. Influential temptation. We are all at some stage of our lives where we are faced with influential temptation. So it may not be like this, but influential temptation. Influential comes from your job. It comes from your peers. Come from family members. Influential temptation. Temptation. Not to go to church, temptation, not to be part of anything. Influential temptation. She was actually committing sexual harassment in the workplace. That's something, that's something rampant. She was considered the first lady. So he in a real, he in a real predicament here now. But you can't go and tell nobody about this. He's already a slave. But this is what this boy had to endure. Remember, at this stage, Joseph didn't know God's plan. Eh? Understand it. Joseph did not know God's plan for him. All he knows is that his brothers sold him into that. First of all, they wanted to kill him. One of them spared him. All he knows, he was sold into slavery, and this is where he is right now. So he, he don't know what God had planned for him, but Never question God. I never give in to this. Look at the next temptation we face. Promotional or promotion temptation. Genesis 39 and verse 9. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me. Joseph reached up. When you reach up in society, when you reach up in your workplace, when you don't bless it with promotion, what do you think does come behind in the shadows? Temptation. Temptation comes in the back in all shape and size. God bless you with promotion. Somebody wanted to cut a little corner. Somebody passing a little money. Reach up to a certain level where you're in charge of one or two people and then people looking for favors. Joseph has ridden, risen to a place of trust with Potiphar and was given full executive power in Potiphar's business enterprise. He clearly understood that promotion comes from the Lord. But with promotion comes new challenges. Mm. 
just going on right through any workplace. No matter where you're working. No matter what you're doing. And for the moment they get a little promotion, people look in. People want to see if they could sway your mind one way or the other to do wrong things. Poor type of temptation, persistent temptation. She spoke to Joseph day after day. Genesis 39 and verse 10. Persistent temptation. So in a situation in your life, beloved, you have been constantly nagged and pointed out that you can get this if you do this. You can go this way if you come, if you come and do this. Persistent temptation. Some temptation hits us repeatedly, especially in our weak areas. In our weak areas. So the devil, I always preach this, and several people talk about this. The devil studies each and every one of us. He studies us. He don't come unprepared by you and I. He's very well prepared to take, to take us. Six type of temptation, isolation temptation. So this is the way, this is one way. After a while, you got to move away from God. You never get to move away from church. You never get to move away from your Bible. You never get to move away from Zoom prayer time and all the other thing. In Genesis 39 and verse 11, now one day, he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants was inside. Genesis 39 and verse 11. Beloved, unlike David, sorry, Joseph, he literally had nowhere to go. He was a slave in this man's house. He had his work to do, then he had this challenge to deal with. Where he could not tell nobody about it, but he would have been wrongfully accused. Matter of fact, he reached to that. When she, when she realized he can't get him, and she accused him of rape, get him to go in jail. But he could not move. But you and I, we could move. We could get away. We could say no to temptation. We could say no to sinning. The world, the world used a system or order. The Bible speaks of system. Call the world to say that it is evil. First John 2 verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But we have to work in the world. We have jobs to perform. So how could we do this and not succumb to temptation? I remember a lot of some years back, I could say, but more than 10 years ago, they literally, a man literally, get the nerve to tell me, boy, you need to come and take out one, two bears, boy, with the boss. When they have the little function on the terrace. Now, those days in Port of Spain, they know the, the, the BG house had a terrace, like the, the deck on top. Every Friday they have that, they must come. And I found out what the boss and them was actually doing up on the terrace. Day. Them not drinking. John, I'm them are drinking, the boss man is drinking. Everybody is drinking. Now, what has happened when you drink alcohol? According to our partner, man, that the truth serum, you know. He say you want to know the truth, drink something. Or carry your partner to drink. You know the truth, what happened in that company or in that plant. And them taking notes, fellas drinking and Talking out files, boy. 
this one and that, this one and this, this one collect this, this one, and then man, after one sat Friday evening, Monday morning, you hear an investigation start. Investigation going on. People getting call. If you can't come to the office, they will send a taxi for you. Long story short, it took them some months. But this is this is about like, like 15 years ago. Men got dismissed. Because when they're going up now, who give in to temptation? Who collect this? Who collect that? Who doing this? Who involved in that? But hey, they tell him if I go up on the terrace, you know what's going on. Love not the world, beloved, neither the things that are in the world. You could have a job, but you don't need to do these things to get ahead. You don't need to be part. James 4 and verse 4, adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship is the world, is an enemy with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy with God. Is it, is it possible for a believer to, to become so worldly that they fail to stand out for the Lord? It is. A believer could come so worldly that you're not standing out again in society as a born again believer. They can't tell the difference. The conversations you're carrying on, your mannerism, your demeanor, all these qualities pointing towards the world. You can't stand out anymore. We are to be different and distinct, beloved. We are to be different and distinct. We are not to allow the world to force us into its mold. And our temptation does. It allows us the, to, to be forced into our mold. Long time we had Pastor Paris. I tried to bring him back for this video as well. He didn't have the time or the resources. I think all them things. Break and loss. It's nice to get bring that back. You take plaster Paris, there's nothing if I put it on the ground. If you take it and they put it in a mold, you get a nice cross. We had our flowers, we had other little things. Some of us are like plaster Paris. And we have a mold called the wool, and they just pour it inside. And we go the distance, somebody gonna put a little piece of wire in it. You know, we used to cut wire and put it in it to strengthen the, the form and harden and put a hook to hang it up. You can't break that after about maybe an hour or two of drying time. Matthew 5, 13 to 16, the world's ideas are beautiful. Anywhere you go now in society, it is well put together. It's well put together. You go to average mall, you're going to buy one thing, Jana. You could never buy one thing there. You, know? you could never. You can't go and buy one sanitizer. Not if you send me by myself. I buy a bottle of sanitizer and come back home. You can't catch me with that. But when you carry others, don't just to one sanitizer. In. A sanitizer, a little something here. There's something no, not wrong with that. But sometimes I say, wait, well, how are you catching this? Can't tell them no. But temptation is like that. You're going to do something for the Lord. You make a stop. You're going here. A partner call you so. And so we're going, beloved. But that is only, no one what pastors talk about, and I know reaching introduction. You know. So I'll touch on the flesh and I will close. Born into every one of us, from the most innocent child to the most Godly adults, 
is a built-in desire and need and nature to lean towards sin. We have a desire to lean towards sin. So we inherit this from the first, from Adam. It's called the old nature. So we have this desire. So beloved, my intent is for us to recognize where we are being tempted. So the examples we use here, no, maybe you might tell yourself it's far fetched, but we are all in jobs where we have we get a little promotion or, or we are influential in some way or the other, and we give in. But when a man is tempted, when he is drawn away from his away of his own loss and entice. When he's drawn away, what are the to drawn away? As I started the message, beloved, let me tell you something. Whenever you get cold for the Lord, you don't have that desire to read. You don't have that desire to pray. You don't have that desire to talk to somebody about the Lord or to encourage our soul. Check yourself. Whenever I get up in the morning or Sunday morning and I think of church as something like a task and not an enjoyment. When you reach a part of your life where you'd rather get up 4 o'clock in the morning and go on an excursion and come back 10 o'clock in the night and, and you feel nothing. But then now for Sunday, now you come to a church service and you're struggling to keep your eye open, something is wrong. Something is definitely wrong. Because we serve a, go all over the place. I will tell them, Charin, that you know, Sunday morning, they're a little bit, you know, slow to get about the day they hear they're going to Tobago. I don't have to tell them, pack the van. I don't have to tell them, get ready. Oh, God, Charin, don't get excited. Okay. But same thing with us. We know different. But they enjoy that. They don't get all the time. But we will do this all, we do this, we will rather go somewhere, we anxious, we, 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 we get it ready first. It has nothing to do with the Lord, you know? it has nothing to do with the, with, with the Bible, nothing to do with, with God. But the first, and for church, look, we have an empty mic here. The expectation is somebody, you know, you come up and sing. Hey, Brother Jesse, I don't think you have any roster here where you sign a book to come up. No, you see a mic empty. You want to do something for the Lord, come up and sing. It's not old hymns. It's not new hymns. We didn't practice it anyway. You have a voice. Lord bless you with our voice. We have the technology. You see an empty mic. I think Sister Trisha will normally be here. But she's not here. Come up and sing. No, we're not getting that. So, beloved, let this thing resonate with us. We are all dropping short from time to time as believers. We're dropping short. We drop in short. And then now when things not adding up in our life, you're asking why. Let's go on a word of prayer, beloved. Most gracious Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for life. Thank you for all that you have blessed us with. We meet me for a special way, this word which you have blessed on my heart to deliver. That you will find that lodging place in all our hearts and minds. We pray for these sick ones. To stretch for your hand upon them, those at home, those that may be online listening at this time, they are unable to come, that you will touch them, that you will strengthen them. But you know, watch over the various activities of this day, these Sunday schools, these services, one in Ari Perro, and even those who want up there to assist with that work, that you'll give them journey mercies and protection on the road. Down to the Sunday school this afternoon, and the young hearts and minds will be attending. That you will bless. I'll be resting your hands. All these things in your name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Shall we all stand, please? Three, three to three.
I don't know it. Who can help us up with this? Auntie Mary or oh yes sir. Another deaf. The boy wanted a bicycle. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Right. But he realizes the ice cream fella passing all the time. Correct? Really? Good. But I tell you this morning about the text, what God expects, and what to follow. And what did he fella do? When he said, What is his prayer? He only man pass at all. Good. That's what every man missing in overcoming temptation. Follow that message. Tonight, and I'll keep on with it. Thank you. Amen. So, Brother Janam, who come and dismiss us. Um, Brother Jesse, that another hymn to add on to the. I never heard that before in my life. I'm sorry. I will again like that then. That's a very long time. The key says a long time. Right? So, the next one to add up so we can practice that so we can add it. Thanks, Sister Thelma, for that. Brother Janam will dismiss us. In closing prayer this morning, Brother Jesse, to dismiss us in a word of prayer, Brother Jesse. Less than one, two. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you praise and thanks for this morning to be in your house, to be able to receive the understanding of your word. Lord, I pray that our hearts would have been blessed, but more so filled and challenged with the word of Lord Jesus. Pray that we we'll continue to, Lord, be guided by our word of Lord, to also recognize where we have failed and where we have sinned, our Lord Jesus. Pray that we would continue to seek your forgiveness, our Lord, but most of all, your guidance upon our lives, our Lord. We will always lean not to our own understanding, our Lord. Pray today, the Lord, that you would bless us and watch over the various services at this time. Now you bring us back here, the Lord, for the rest of the day and watch over us now and for the rest of the week for these things. I ask in your name. Amen. 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 Praise God from home. All